We are very dependent upon electricity. And recent events, such as Superstorm Sandy and the blackout at the 2013 Super Bowl, have been a very real reminder that our electricity grid today is pretty fragile. And most of the time when we have a power outage, the impact is a lot more serious than 108 million sports fans waiting for the game to resume. Uh, this picture behind me of the New York skyline is a really good reminder of the horrid impact that Hurricane Sandy had and the way that it changed our normal everyday lives, you know, partly and, and largely because we lost power. So now we're taking this very, very critical resource and we're exposing it to a new threat. It's kind of ironic that as we inject more technology to make the grid stronger and smarter and more resilient, we also open it to a new threat, which is cyber attack. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm a big believer in smart grid. I think it has amazing capabilities to allow us to integrate more renewable energy. We can implement new efficiency programs uh, for our resources. We can empower consumers in new ways. All really, really good things. But as we add communications and intelligence, we also potentially expose um, a, a, a vulnerability to it as well. In fact, Department of Homeland Security reports that 40%, that's 40% of the cyber attacks they responded to in 2012 were against the energy sector. Now that also includes oil and gas, but I think it's very safe to assume that our electricity grid is a target. So I'm very, very fortunate to be leading a project that's working in this area and helping to address this very real concern. I've joined a team that's been working in this space for a couple of years and in fact has been in dialogue with hundreds of experts across the energy sector, the security sector, and has come up with this formulation of what we call a security fabric architecture. The grid is by definition connected, so securing it is very complex. It's not enough to put malware protection on a control system device, though that's not a bad thing to do. It's not enough to establish secure communications using VPN between two critical infrastructure endpoints, although that's still also a really good thing to do. What we really want to do with the grid is to establish end-to-end -end security with the appropriate level of protection for the devices and the applications commensurate with the criticality uh, that they bring to the application or to the, the infrastructure. And so we really need that right level of security and it needs to be designed in. Just as a woven fabric is much stronger than the individual threads that make it up, we can make the grid more secure by adding more security capabilities to the various elements that make it up. And that includes things like adding hardware level protection, uh, supporting that in the operating systems, and also in the applications that are running on power platforms. By adding all of those layers, we can make them stronger. And then by establishing very secure confidential communication between endpoints, again, relying on the trust that can be built into the hardware and those layers of protection, uh, we can deliver a much stronger grid. They all work together. And those combined layers can help us detect anomalous behavior, even if that behavior hasn't been seen before, or, or the signatures, as it's sometimes called, hasn't been seen before. And our requirement is to do all of that very, very quickly. Some of these power technologies operate on very high-speed networks. Uh, as an example, they may be taking measurements 60 times a second, and we need to secure that. So this is moving now into the field. We're implementing our first instantiation of this security fabric notion in Texas. So it turns out in the United States, we have three high voltage transmission grids. We have the East, we have the West, and Texas has its own. <laughs> A lot of people say Texas is like its own country. <laughs> Um, and it's actually very exciting. In Texas, uh, the government is funding a project to implement something called synchrophasers. And these synchrophasers are used or will be used to help manage the integration of large-scale wind into the grid. 
Um, and so in addition to being a very cool sounding word, I love the word synchrophaser, they take very high frequency measurements of the voltage characteristics of the transmission lines. And so it's important, given that those measurements will be used to manage the grid, that uh, they be accurate. And so we need to secure the devices, we need to secure the communications, the visualization, and eventually the automated response. So we're beginning the project now to weave together all of these technologies and to deliver this new notion of a security fabric and a stronger grid. So wish us luck, and thank you very much.